A was sovereignty rest with Allah and clause B if A to B was that no legislation will be done repugnant to the Quran and the Sunnah. So this is the interpretation of this ayah that do not put yourselves ahead of Allah and His Messenger. But you know the shuyuf usually they can't speak English, they can't read English. So the secular minded people they quietly added one line that this is the directed principle, not an operative clause. <laughs> this is a directed principle, not an operative clause. Then General Jawahar, when he was the president, and he tried to Islamize, and he, by eighth amendment in the constitution, he made this clause operative. Now, to make it operative, he had to do certain things. Again, his advisors were again the same people. He wanted to Islamize the constitution, but advisors were again the same. So, he did two things. Number one, he established Sharia courts. Sharia courts, then federal Sharia court, then appellate Sharia court. And it was decided that any citizen of Pakistan will go to the Sharia court with a petition having a fatwa from some mufti that such and such law is un-Islamic. So it should be changed. The Sharia court will do the hearing and finally will pass the judgment and if Sharia court finds that yes, the law is, the petition is okay then it will declare such and such law an Islamic and will ask the government to bring with new legislation and give them certain time period. But two restrictions were again put on the Sharia court. Number one, the family laws will not be reconsidered by the Sharia court. And the Sharia, the family laws in the in Pakistan have been declared by all the different ulama from all different sects, Sunni, Shia, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hamli, Salafi, by all of them that they are un-Islamic. So Sharia court cannot touch the family laws, number one. And also it was mentioned there in the framework of the Sharia court that for 10 years even the economic issues will not be brought to the Sharia court. So whenever the 10 years were complete, a petition against riba that the banking and insurance, all these businesses are un-Islamic. So they should be put some restriction on it. And Sharia court declared it un-Islamic. Then an appeal was filed against it to the federal Sharia court. And federal Sharia court also declared it un-Islamic and give the government one year to do new legislation and to make new economic system or to amend the banking system of Pakistan. But in the meantime, government asked one of the banks to go for appeal to the Appellant Sharia Court of Supreme Bank, of the uh, Appellant Sharia Bench of Supreme Court to reconsider this First Muslim Commercial Bank went for appeal, then United Bank also died, and then government also jumped into it and went for appeal. Now, government did a very clever thing that one or two judges retired and they didn't appoint new judges until the bench was complete, no hearing could be done. Then, time of Mr. Pervez Musharraf came and he was very clever. One of the big chef, Shiyukh of Pakistan, Mufti Taki Usmani. He was removed from the bench and two new judges were appointed and the appeal was brought to hearing and it was turned down. Now this is what happens, but still that clause is there. And to Islamize the laws, what was done, it's a very interesting story. Uh, uh, what is the name of that? 
Yeah, first Islamic Research Institute was formed, and then uh, Islamic Council was formed, and it is it has got the constitutional importance that the Islamic Council, the yeah, Islamic Ideology Council, this is an official uh, institution, and it's the duty of the Islamic Ideology Council is that it re reconsider, it considers all the laws and all the systems of the country and gives its reports to the parliament. And the parliament is bound to the, uh, it's the binding of the government to present the Islamic Ideology Council reports to the parliament. Now how these reports are presented to the parliament is very interesting. When the session starts, there are bunches of papers coming from Islamic Ideology Council and they are lying on the desk of every member of the parliament. And now the agenda one by one comes, the secretary of the assembly, he says next item and the next item is called presentation of the report from Ideology Council and the Joint Secretary announces presented and next. <laughs> this is the presentation of the report of Ideology Council. So this is how the secular people and the westernized people they play with Islam. But inshallah by bit by bit you know General Jawal have made certain amendments to bring this towards Islam and that also was undone by the secular people and now everything is trying to be undone, you know. What Dhan Zawad did was not Islam, it was actually an attempt to make Islam and by the other people it was half-heartedly and it was not effective. But certain things were there, for example, the University Grants Commission of Pakistan passed a ruling that though no degree shall be awarded until and unless a candidate has passed a compulsory subject of Islamic studies and Pakistan studies. Now, Islamic studies is compulsorily taught until the degree. Bachelor degree cannot be awarded until Islamic studies has been passed. Now, how the people play there? Since bachelor degree of dental surgery, BDS, with the qualification I have, this and the medical degree MBBS also and the university engineering degree they also needed Islamic studies to be taught. But what quietly the senate of Punjab University did that the wording of the university grants commission is until and unless a student has passed a compulsory subject of Islamic studies and Pakistan study. So it was, I was told that quietly Punjab University has passed a ruling that the marks of these two subjects will not be added to the total marks. Only a student is supposed to pass in this subject. You know, when a student is only asked to pass, he will just read for nominally, just to get through. Since the marks are not going to be added, he not work hard. No, these are three things which are due. But yet, until today, this clause exists in the constitution of Pakistan. According to 8th amendment, it was made operative, but according to a ruling of Supreme Court, you know, there is a clause afterwards according to which constitution of Pakistan is supreme. Now there was a case in which a ruling against the Islam was given. Now the Chief Justice of Supreme Court passed the ruling. That is also a clause and this is also a clause and both the clauses are contradictory. Now some judges, they pass that is ruling according to this and some judges pass ruling according to this. And what now is going on? You know according to that 8th amendment, anybody who insult Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or other messengers, he can have death penalty. Now all the secular people and the whole West is after the Pakistani government that amend this law, remove this clause from your constitution, remove this, remove this. 
and then off and on cases are registered against the people who insult Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and the whole West and the whole international media is highlighting it. Oh, this is unjust. This is unjust. This is exploitation. This, that, and now very soon the, the present government is trying to amend that constitution. You know, first it was that the red case will be registered against him in the police station. Then it was said, no, no, the in charge of the police station is not allowed to register this case. Deputy Commissioner should allow him to register the case. Then it was said, no, no, proper hearing should be done. And the district judge should ask the uh, police officer to register the case. Now recently there is a case going on in Pakistan. A Christian girl, he, she did some insult to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then the district judge asked the police to register a case. And that case hearing was taken to high court and high court also declared her guilty. Now even the governor of a province went to her house and asked her to write petition to the president to forgive him, forgive her. No, this is what was going on. So the most important any Islamic constitution there can be no legislation done, passed against Quran and the Sunnah. No matter what the law is, if you don't have Allah's fear in your mind, you can play with the law. So, with the law, Allah Almighty mentioned Allah, fear Allah. Only with Allah's fear, you can make the so Whenever there is an Islamic country pursuing the Islamic law, the will of this ayah will be produced by such words like no legislation will be done, repugnant to the Quran and the Sunnah, but taqullah and fear Allah. No matter how good is the law, but if there is no Allah's fear in the minds of the Muslims, they can play with the best laws too. You know, a lawyer is trained to play with the law. It's only Allah's fear that can stop you from playing with Allah's law, <coughs> divine law in Allah, Samir Ali. And motivation for Allah's fear is in Allah, Samir Ali. Indeed, Allah is hearing, knowing. Another important basis of an Islamic state is that there are always two things in a country. One is constitution, the other is some dignitary, some great man whom all the citizens of that country have a respect for. If you go to America, George Washington is paid a respect in all America. Abraham Lincoln is paid a respect in throughout America. If you go to India, you will find Mahatma Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi, to be the respectable person. In Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Paidazam, is paid that respect. But all these leaders, they are great leaders, no doubt, but after all, they are human beings, they had to have some shortcomings. But the nations have to build their heroes. You know, if they have some sharp corners, they will have to trim those sharp corners to portray them as ideals. But Muslims are fortunate enough to have a real, genuine leader in the form of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now, that center, you know, if Islam is like a circle, the outer boundary is Islam, but the center of that circle is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If all the citizens of Islamic state they have a love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they will all like to follow 
what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. They will pray the way he prayed. They will fast the way he fasted. They will like to walk the way he asked us to walk. They will try to wear the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam walked. 